Who doesn't love trick-or-treating, am I right? I mean, candy, costumes, what's not to like? But did you know that before going around to strangers' houses and begging for candy became a thing, the treat of choice was actually cakes? And so that's what we are going to be making today. A 400-year-old recipe for soul cakes. Traditionally, these little cakes are served on All Souls Day, and they have a fascinating past going all the way back to the time of the Druids. So get ready for some Halloween history, this time on Tasting History. Today's recipe comes from Eleanor Fetteplace's receipt book. It was written in the late 16th and early 17th century, but it wasn't put out then as an actual cookbook. Rather, it was someone's personal recipes that they compiled and they were passed down the Fetteplace family tree until they were finally published in the 1980s. To make cakes, take flour and sugar and nutmeg and cloves and mace and sweet butter and sack and a little ale barm. Beat your spice and put in your butter, and your sack cold, then work it well all together, and make it in little cakes, and so bake them. If you will, you may put in some saffron into them, or fruit." So while Eleanor doesn't actually call them soul cakes in her book, these are the little buns that would have been served around all sorts of holidays, but especially on All Souls Day. So what you'll need is one half cup or 120 milliliters of lukewarm ale, Make sure to keep it under 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius, or you could kill the yeast. One teaspoon of yeast, three cups or 360 grams of flour, one half cup or 100 grams of sugar, four tablespoons of softened butter, one half teaspoon of salt, only if you're using unsalted butter, one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, one quarter teaspoon of clove, one quarter teaspoon of mace, one third cup sack or sherry, one quarter teaspoon of saffron threads, optional, and three quarters cup dried fruit, plus more for decoration. Now the fruit is optional as well, as is how you use it. You can actually put it into the dough, or you can use it as decoration, or you can do as I'm going to do, and use it uh, as decoration and have it put into the dough. Just make sure that it's cut up small, so you can use whatever you want, cherries or currants or apricots or whatever, but make sure they're cut up small so they incorporate well. You can also have an optional egg for an egg wash. Now, while Miss Fetteplace gives us permission to add either saffron or fruit, I've always been a fan of why choose or when and is on the table, so I'm going to be using saffron and fruit, and Miss Fetteplace will just have to be okay with that. So the first step is making something akin to ale barm, because what ale barm is, is the, uh, the yeast that grows during the process of making ale, and it's going to be hard for most people to, to find that unless they're brewing ale at home, uh, so we're going to make something that will work instead. So mix your yeast into the lukewarm ale and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Then in a separate bowl, put your saffron threads into the sack or the sherry and let those sit for 10 minutes as well. Of course, if you're not going to use saffron, then skip that part. While those sit, take a large bowl and whisk together the flour and the sugar, as well as the salt, the nutmeg, the clove, and the mace. Once the yeasted ale has sat for about 10 minutes, pour it into the flour mixture and work it in. Then add your softened butter and the sack with the saffron. Also, if you're using the dried fruit, add that in and mix everything together. Now this dough is really, really sticky. So once we start kneading it a bit, it will become easier to work with. But if it's still just way too sticky, go ahead and add a little bit more flour until it's workable. Either way, how much you need it is really up to you because she doesn't give us a lot of instruction in that. So if you want it to be more bread-like, um, then you're gonna need it for probably about 15 minutes or so like you would a normal loaf of bread. And that's going to make it so it's a little bit springier, but it's also gonna be more chewy, like bread. Um, then if you want it to be more like a cake, a little bit crumblier, then knead it for like four or five minutes at most. Um, but just know that it's never going to have the same consistency as a cake that's been leavened with uh, baking powder and baking soda. Yeasted cakes just are going to have a little bit more, more chew to them, and that's just how it, how it goes. I'm going in the middle. I'm kneading it for about seven or eight minutes, uh, so I can kind of see, is this bread? Is this cake? No need to decide. But once you have kneaded the bread, then leave it to rise for about 45 minutes. Know that it's not going to rise as much as most bread doughs, especially if you've incorporated any fruit. Um, it will probably just get a little bit puffy, and that's okay. But once that 45 minutes is up, or the dough gets a little bit puffy, go ahead and form it into about 10 to 12 little balls or cakes. 
Now, traditionally, these cakes would have a little cross put onto them, either by cutting or just kind of indenting a cross, or by actually putting some fruit on it, which is what I'm going to do. But if you don't want to put a cross on it, you could also just uh, put maybe a wee little ghost on there, and then it would still be a soul cake. Uh, but really, you can put whatever you want. But regardless of the design that you choose, let them sit for another 20 minutes or so while you preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. Once the cakes have had time to rest, you can go ahead and put that optional egg wash on, or else just set them in the oven and bake for 20 minutes. Now while the aroma of sweet saffron wafts through your house, make sure to hit that like button as we go back to the origins of soul cakes. Soul a soul a soul cake. Please, good missus, a soul cake. An apple, a pear, a plum, a cherry, any good thing to make us all merry. One for Peter, two for Paul, three for him who made us all. From the Middle Ages until the early 20th century, variations on this song or other soul cake songs were sung by people going house to house on All Souls Eve, or November 1st, making a plea for sweet treats, ale, and as the song implies, soul cakes. Today, of course, it's more often done on Halloween itself, and the song has been turned into a more pithy trick or treat, and it usually doesn't involve either ale or cake anymore. Probably best since it's mostly little kids, but anyway, how did this practice get started? Well, like so many of our holiday traditions, we have the pagans to thank. Specifically, this time, the Druids. Before Christianity came to the British Isles, the Celtic people celebrated a festival called Samhain. It marked the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. The festival was dedicated to the dying sun and the shortening days of winter. But it was also thought that during the festival, the boundary between the land of the living and that of the dead was more easily crossed, allowing the dead to visit their temporal loved ones. Even now in Ireland, you can visit Neolithic passage tombs, which are aligned with the sunrise during the time of Samhain. So if dearly departed Granny is coming all the way over from the netherworld, it would only be polite to have a snack waiting for her when she got there. And one of the snacks that was most popular with the Celts was a little round cake. The whole thing is similar to Dia de Muertos, celebrated in Mexico today. And that makes me really want to watch the movie Coco, because I freaking love that movie. Anyway, while it's great to see old Granny again, her opening the door to the land of the dead often lets some of the more seedy characters through as well. The Eoshi, or spirits and fairies, would pop through and run amok on the farm. So if you want your cattle and livestock to make it through winter alive, you need to placate those mischievous little spirits. Luckily, they also seemed to like cakes. So all was well in the British Isles, until the 6th through 8th century when a new religion came knock knock knocking on old Albion's door. Knock knock, it's me, Christianity. Love what you've done with the place, the holiday. Mwah, perfection, wouldn't change a thing, except maybe the name, let's start there. And just like that, Samhain turned into All Hallows' Eve, or Halloween on October 31st, All Saints' Day, or All Souls' Eve on November 1st, and then All Souls' Day on November 2nd. They also got rid of the bonfires because, you know, those are dangerous, though those will be coming back in a few centuries around Guy Fawkes Day, Bonfire Night. But they did want to keep those lovely little cakes that the uh, Celts were making, as well as the whole, you know, dead loved ones kind of thing. They really liked that. But instead of having them come back from the dead, they decided, you know what, they can stay where they are in purgatory and we'll just pray for them instead. And so a new tradition was born, called souling. And that was where people would go from house to house, usually the poor, uh, offering their prayers for the immortal soul of Granny, and all that they asked in return was a little cake. And as it was considered an alm for the poor, the tradition of putting a cross on it developed sometime in the Middle Ages. Now, while sanctioned by the church at large, the actual practices of the night varied wildly from place to place around the British Isles. In Wales, the giving of cakes was less to uh, encourage prayers, and more to actually placate death itself. When knocking on doors, the visitor would say, Deca Deca, come to the door and give to the messenger of death. And if no cake was given, then Deca Deca, under the door, the wife's head in smithereens. Kind of dark, though I'm sure it also rhymed in the original Welsh. But sure makes you glad of the more innocuous trick-or-treat that kids say today. In parts of England, people would go around with lit candles or lanterns as they walked around to ward off witches. And in some places, it was common for the knockers to actually be mummers, who were actors in a uh, sort of costume. Some would dress as the evil spirits that they were trying to ward off, and others would simply dress as their favorite saint. 
And who are you supposed to be? I'm St. Chelfrith of Monkwermouth, contributor to the Codex Amiatinus Bible. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Have a baby Ruth. Speaking of baby Ruths, as candy took pride of place during the 20th century, soul cakes all but disappeared from the festivities, leaving way for hard Tootsie Rolls and candy corn. But they are still served, mostly at churches in some parts of Britain and America, on that third day of the festival, All Souls Day. So while I don't expect these to outperform a Kit Kat or a Snickers, I do think that by the smell that I'm smelling right now, they might do a little bit better than, say, some Smarties or those little wax cola bottles that nobody ever eats. So after 20 minutes in the oven, take the cakes out and set them on a wire rack to cool. And here they are, 17th century soul cakes. They're so cute. They just look so nice. And they smell so good. You can really smell the saffron. So if you're not using saffron, um, you, you should use saffron. Um, but those other spices will probably really take pride of place. But for me, what I'm smelling is saffron, and I love that. Though I can, I can also smell the other, uh, other spices in there. Anyway, let's give this a shot. Hmm. They're good. They're good. They're, I mean, they're not a cake um, at all. I mean, I think the modern day soul cakes are a little bit more cake-like. This is not a cake. It's definitely closer to a bread, but not as, not as soft or springy. It's a little bit more dense, um, but, but they're nice. I think that one will, will do just fine, um, but I really like the flavor. The flavor is what gets me. Um, it's, it's mild, but it's sweet and saffrony, and, and you can taste the other spices, but nothing really overpowers anything. So I do think that it would go well with, you know, something to drink, because uh, they are a little drier than, than I might like. But they're fun, and don't hand these out to people at trick-or-treating, because the kids will be very mad, but maybe if you made them for your own household, that would be fine. But regardless, have a happy Halloween and a merry All Souls Day, and I will see you next time on Tasting History. I'm a soul cake. I'm a soul cake.